the stock swoosh. Um, she is the founder and owner of the stock swoosh. It's an international educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. She owns the method that she teaches and she created it. And it's unique to the stock swoosh. The method is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. She's also the executive producer and creator of her own television show, which is titled Make a Million with Melissa. And Make a Million with Melissa is a what to do and how to do it television show on stock trading. She also appears on TV as an expert stock market analyst discussing the market, stocks, news, and world events on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, and CBS News Corporation. Thank you for joining us today, Melissa. Just one second, and I will get my, um, I will, you'll need to unmute yourself. I'm going to make you the presenter. Good morning. Hi, and I'm also going to change you to an organizer so you can see the questions on the fly since we talked about this before. Great. Can you see my screen? All good? Um, all good. Now I can hear you. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Sherry. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be back to Traders Exclusive, and here we are. Halfway through 2022, really hard to believe. We're actually even halfway through the summer, which is even more hard to believe. This year is flying by. And as Sherry said, I talk on TV about the stock market and the economy. In fact, I was on CBS News this morning. And of course, everyone is talking about inflation. Everyone is talking about a recession. And everyone is talking about how the market's falling. This may scare people who are invested in the market long term. But for those of us that are here, if you're here, if you're new to trading, if you're currently trading or you're someone like me, if you're an active trader, you can actually take advantage of the sell-offs in this market. And the market has sold off for most of the year so far of 2022. So I focus on shorting. I like to short. I've been shorting for years. Even though the market was bullish prior to this year, I've been shorting all along since I created my own system. And that is what we're gonna talk about today. The advantages of shorting, the system that I use, and again, if anyone has any questions, you can just plop it in the room and I will see it as we go along today. This is me, and I'm sure some of you already know me or have seen me. If you have questions, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. And you can feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype, where I have many of my TV hits, and then of course, webinars like today. So we're getting into, again, halfway through the year. If you've been someone that has been attempting to trade this year, buying the dips and failed to do that, it's very easy to see that it's not working and therefore you need to do something different. What is that? Well, you have to find a strategy, in, in my opinion, that works in any market conditions, any market conditions at all. The reason that I like to short is because short moves happen fast, very, very quick in a short period of time. Because when you think about it, if you're long a stock, okay, and then you're up money, and then all of a sudden you're down, and that's what's happening to people in the market right now, you're down money, you're down in the position, you will panic. Should I sell it? Should I get out of it? What should I do, okay? Actually, the, the correspondent today in CBS uh, News said she was in positions that she had bought, and she thought they were good stocks, and she's down in them, and she doesn't know what to do, and she's kind of panicking. She said it. She said it live on air. This is the philosophy. This is what happens when people are down money. They panic. And then we, as traders, as individual traders, look for specific stocks or the market to short, to short against the panic that's coming in. So one of the nice things about what I do is the moves happen very quickly and very fast. And again, why do you want to be in and out of trades fast? Because you never know what's going to happen next. The FOMC minutes are out this afternoon. I'll be off the air by here by then, but that's out at 2 o'clock. We have the unemployment number Friday morning. There's so many things, so much volatility that can affect the market on any given second or any given day. So if you can get in and out of a trade in five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or even the first half hour of the day, it's a lot better than holding, holding, holding something forever while you're waiting and then all of a sudden the position is affected by something that happens news-wise or data-wise or some kind of report that comes out. So if you're here today, you're here because you may have an interest in what I do, you may be interested in shorting, or you may be interested in a strategy that you can train, 
that doesn't take up a lot of your time. Because again, time is money. Everyone is busy. Everyone is usually families or things to do. People are even working two jobs right now to get by with inflation. So people have things going on. And so the idea of making money on the side extra, whether you want to do this full time or part time, is always advantageous. Even if you can't trade Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you can trade two days a week, one day a week, that's better than not doing anything at all. And again, some people have been attempting to trade for years and they spend six and a half hours at their desk all day. I do not do that, okay? I focus on the morning time. That is the time of the day. Now I plopped in here the results so far year to date, 2022, for where we're at with the trading room. These are the day trades for the whole year that we've done in the room. I run a live trading room. I call the trades live every day. If you join, decide to do my class, you will get the calls. We've been doing mostly shorts. So these are mostly shorts on here, the stats. And again, the average risk per trade is around $2,800 per risk per trade. These are day trades, they are equity trades on margin. And again, if you have questions on that, you can ask me too. You must have a margin account to day trade and you must have a margin account to short, okay? So this is, an, I call it advanced trader because a risk of $2,800 per trade is a, is a steep risk in my opinion. But we're at $386,094 six months of the year. It's been a great year. We've had a lot of big moves. We've had a lot of momentum. We're gonna talk about that today too. So if you're trading or you're thinking about trading, the fact is that you need a system, a system that produces results in order to make money. And you need a system that produces results in a volatile market, which we're in right now. So my system again, as Sherry said, is called the Golden Gap. It teaches you how to trade gaps and to produce results by shorting. And volatility is the name of the game right now in this market. Why? Every time the market looks like it's going to go up, we rallied yesterday, then we were up this morning, and now we're down. And again, I don't know exactly where we are here now at 108. We have FOMC minutes out at 2, but this is where we were earlier when I clipped the market. This is a chart of the SPY. The S&P uh, ETF, you can see we're down. So here was the rally. Yesterday came out. Secretary John Yellen said, oh, we're going to lift tariffs. We're going to lift the Chinese tariffs. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. The market had a positive reaction. Boom. Didn't go anywhere. Fell immediately today. And again, we'll see we're out the next two days of the week. It's a short week for markets. But you can see, here's the rally we had in the third week of June. And then we sold off. And this was last week, right before the holiday. So the market has failed in every rally so far this year. Does it mean that it's gonna fail overall, that we're never gonna go back up again, we're never gonna have a stained rally? Not necessarily, but as an active trader, as a day trader, I'm looking for opportunities, individual opportunities, each and every single day, in the morning early, to get in and get out. Whether the market rallies all year, whether it drops until the end of the year, the question is, I'm just looking for things to do, specific stocks, specific trades to do in each and any day. And again, many days we've been doing the market too. But the importance of a system is like having a map. If you were going to go travel, okay, I live in New York, I live in Manhattan. If I was going to go travel to some country that I've never been in before, I would take a map, okay? You need a map to tell you where to go on any given day. If you don't have that, you're kind of just trading blindly. And I think a lot of people have gotten into the habit of trading blindly. One, because the market was very bullish last year in 2021. People went long, strong stocks, weak stocks, and made money stupidly last year, even though they didn't know what they were doing because the market was so strong, okay? And traders tend to want to go long more than they want to tend to short. That's, I don't know why, that's not me, but that's a lot of people. I guess buying at the low, selling at the high, people can wrap their head around that shorting. Not everybody can wrap their head around. But again, shorting can be very prosperous, very advantageous. You can make a lot of money shorting. But a map tells you where to go. So my system is like a map in the morning that tells me what stocks to trade or whether or not I shouldn't be doing anything, okay? So my Golden Gap trading system is a system that teaches you how to rate, pick, and play bearish professional gaps. The Golden Gap trading system looks at 26 points to examine and rate the stock that is gapping. This is how you can find which gap is the best to trade each day. And again, I focus on shorting, 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 shorting. It's momentum, okay? We're trading momentum. Why is the market not falling through again today, at least for the first part of the morning, to the upside? Because there's no momentum to the upside today. If you were trying to go long today, you wouldn't be making any money. You'd probably be down. Most stocks today are going with the market, okay? So why short? Why do I like to short? One, because short moves happen quick, okay? 
And fast trades, in my opinion, are the best, in not only in this market, but in any market. Again, too many variables, too many things can affect your position if you're in something. It's kind of like if I said to you, okay, if you had a million dollars in your trading account right now today, an extra million dollars in your account, what would you do with it? Would you go long the market here today? Would you? Or would you short? Now, maybe you wouldn't short. Maybe you think the market's hit the low for the year. Maybe you think that. But would you go long? I mean, the reality is I wouldn't, okay, and I'm not. Whether or not the market continues to break off or not, nobody knows. We don't know. Again, we have a very big number Friday morning, very big. But the fact is people are scared, 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 scared. This idea of panic that's come into the markets and the overall economy and worldwide, especially what's going on right now, even with Ukraine and Russia, all of these things. And people say, well, we're not in a world war. Really? We, the United States has given Ukraine $40 billion or $50 billion or whatever the number is. They keep, we keep giving them more money. We're in the war. Financially, the U.S. is in the war. So, you know, the reality is that people are concerned. They're scared about what's going to happen in the next six months into 2023. And until some serious changes are made, and in my opinion, it's not raising interest rates, we're going to continue to see high inflation. It's almost at 9%. And we're going to continue to see this into 2023. That is creating panic and fear in people where they are worried about their finances, worried about money. They're taking profits in stocks and positions are up. They're selling with gains. They're selling with gains, maybe not as much gains as they had in January of this year. And then also people are getting scared where they're selling when they're down in things. Okay. All of that is panic. Okay. So again, how do you make money fast? You play a gap early in the morning, quick, quick, quick. You get in and you get out. So I'm looking for the best gap to trade in the morning with momentum. Why do you want momentum? Because you as one individual trader, if you can get a move a dollar, two dollars, three dollars more, if you have a thousand shares of something and it drops and you short it and it drops three bucks, what do you make? Three thousand dollars. It's the whole idea of getting a big move because Unless you can take 20,000 shares of something, 50,000 shares of something, some massive position like a big professional trader, you're not going to make several thousand shares in a position otherwise without the momentum, without the move. And again, taking too big of a position puts you more at risk, okay, especially if you get the wiggles and jiggles of the market. So for me, it's always about finding the best gap. And again, I'm looking to short. So what do I mean by the best gap? I mean, the best gap is the one that's going to work correctly on the day. Not all gaps work. In fact, some people are scared of gaps. They're worried about gaps. They're afraid of gaps. They, they think they move too fast. The fact that they move fast is actually good. It's actually positive. People are scared of shorting. They shouldn't be. That's positive, too. So the idea is to find the right one to do. But you have to find the right stock to trade no matter what you do, okay? Some gaps are not made with institutional money. That is why they don't work. So every time I get up in the morning, I'm looking for a gap that's made with institutional money. Again, I will go long. I mean, we have gone long this year, but I mostly prefer to short, and we mostly have shorted. But the idea is that you can make fast money shorting. Now, let's break it down here and talk about what is a gap. Simple explanation of a gap. A gap is a break in continuity, interruption, hiatus. It's a divergence, a difference, a disparity. What is a gap? A stock gap, so the opening price today is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Simple. So the stock market, the U.S. stock market closes every day at 4 o'clock Eastern time and opens the next day at 9.30 in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay? You always have a close in the open in the U.S. stock market. So with Forex, you only have one close a week. So that doesn't give you a lot of opportunity. This is for stock trading simply because of the fact that you have five days to take advantage of having a gaps happen into the next day. And from Friday, it's into the close from Friday into the morning on Monday when the market opens at 9.30 a.m. on Monday. Post-market and pre-market trading happens in gaps. Happens in the market, happens in stocks. The, the overall market, and when I say the market, I mean the SPY, the QQQs, you could even say the DIA, which is the ETF for the diamonds. All of those things, okay, have trading that happens after hours and in the pre-market and in the morning. So I'm looking for these gaps every single solitary day. And I put in the gaps here we did all last week. Now, we had a short week last week because I closed the room for Friday for the holiday. But I thought we'd go over here every single gap we did last week in the day trades. And then you'd see the ones that we did. There was one trade that we did that lost. 
We did two trades that day. It was a retake, but we had every day was a winning day last week, and we're going to go over it. Now, when I take a trade, I use a stop. I put a stop in. It's a hard stop. It's a limit order stop. That stop protects me. It's like the insurance. If the trade gets stopped out, then I lose whatever I risk. It's not unlimited. Otherwise, you have unlimited risk when you take a position, and that's not good, okay? The idea of trading is not that you'll never have any losers. As you saw in the stats, if you scroll back, again, there are trades that I take that lose. But most of the trades that I take win, and it's about having more winners than losers. But the point of having a stop is, and it protects you so that your losers don't run against you, okay? This is equity trading. This is stock trading. This is where we're buying uh, the actual stock or we're shorting it on margin. I am going to talk about a couple options because I do do options too, Anna. Uh, that's later on in the webinar. The trades I'm going over here from last week are the day trades that were on margin. You could have done these trades as options too, but I have a separate options newsletter where you would get the trade emailed to you that's an options trade. The trains in the run, the day trades, you have to be there live to get the calls, okay? All right, let's go over it. So we did save. We did save on Monday, 627. Let's take a look at it. Now, again, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So this was safe. The night before it closed up here, boom. Gap down here in the morning, around 23, whatever, and change. Fell, dropped, we shorted it. The red candlestick here, the red bar, depicts the fall off and the selling that came in to save, okay? So we shorted it, entry was 23.10, 7,000 shares is a risk of 2,800. Exit was 22.75. Not that big of a deal, in and out. Profit was $2,450. Again, usually I'm looking to make one-to-one. -one. So if you're risking 500, I'm usually looking to make that amount. So whatever you turn it over, close enough. This got to the target, this got to the number, the first target out. Again, we're in and out quick, 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 quick. Did this continue? Yes, you can see that it continued down in here. And I'm gonna show you uh, the one minute. As far as futures, Anna's asking about futures. I do not trade futures. Again, I'm very good at reading the market and we're trading gaps in the market. If you want to apply that to how you want to trade the futures directional bias, that's up to you. I personally am not doing that though, Anna. So the application for how you want to use the information is up to you. Now, here was the same trade. Again, this is a one minute. So the daily showed the gap. You can also see it here in the one. Again, closed here at four o'clock, boom. Gap down here in the morning. You see where it is? We did it, got the drop, got out, done. This did come all the way down. Again, I was in and out. I was way up before this. I get this question all the time. How do you get that exit and exits? I do not always get the low of a day exit and a short. I do not always get the high of a day exit and a long. That is not my goal. My goal is to make money. My goal is to find the best gap every day to trade and get the direction right and be in and out and book it. I call it chunking it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. And this was a trade. We were in and out, done. It did continue. It did not get to 22. It tried, it almost did, but you actually could have pulled another 50 cents out of it or more. Again, this still fell in the morning. So you could have held this into 1030. And that's so fast to me. Again, the idea of trading to four o'clock, I think it's just a total waste of time. And most people end up giving money back in the morning, if they, I mean, in the afternoon, if they trade all day. Then we did the next day Nike. So the first trade we did a Nike stopped. Entry was 107.40, stop was 108.70, 2,200 shares was a risk of 28.60. Again, this is on margin. You can take less shares. You can take 200 shares, 100 shares, whatever you wanna do. I don't think this is expensive, but you might think it is expensive depending on, again, how what size of account you have. Exit was 108.70 because the trade stopped out, and here was the day of it. You can see kind of the ugly tail that we had here. So this was the particular day. Actually, Nike had earnings this day. So here was the gap. Stock closed here, gap down, rallied. Here's where we got stopped out. Then we retook it and it fell. I'll show you here on the one minute chart what it did. Again, this was really a, uh, a big move up that happened very quick. Here was the gap. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. We were in it. We got stopped. Then it ran all the way up to here. Again, the whole idea of using a stop is to protect you. It's like the insurance. So you don't have an unlimited risk. You see where it went. It went all the way up here to almost 114, 113 and change. That was an ugly move up. But anyways, I stayed on top of it and we ended up retaking it. You could have stopped. You could have taken the one loss in it and been done. Anyways, we ended up redoing it. Entering the second trade then, which worked, was 108.20. 
2,700 shares risk was 29.70, exit was 106.55. This was, again, a nice move, a fast move in and out, profit 44.55. But I will tell you that this continued. We did an option in this too. It was a put. It was, I think it was an easier play to hold as an option. But anyways, long story short, this went all the way down to like 103 and change on that day. But again, I did not want to stay in this all day with the first trade stopped. We were up in the second trade. So here was the first one that got stopped. Then we retook it. Then we got the drop. But I just want to show you down in here with this one on the day. So this was into three o'clock, four o'clock in the day. So you really, and this is one particular one that you could have been in all day. Again, that's not what I like to do. That's not what my goal is. Any questions on this? So again, that was first trade stopped, second trade worked. That was Tuesday last week. It actually was a pretty busy week considering it was a week before a holiday. Part of it was a market. Part of it was that we had the, some nice flushes in the market. And again, you know, you never know. You never know when you're going to have a busy week or, or, or a slow week. Next week, earnings season begins. So I expect it to be busy next week as well the banks report next week, and I talked about this on CBS this morning too, the way that the banks report next week is a precursor to how the market acts going into these summer months, July and August, because otherwise, then all of a sudden it's gonna be September and then it's fall, and we're running late into the year, you know, late into the year, and I think people are starting to get antsy about that because again, we're six months into 2022, and we're nowhere near the highs, which is very unusual for the way the market's been so bullish the last several years. Then Wednesday, we shorted the QQQs, we did the Qs. So let's look at it here on the daily. Again, this is a chart of the QQQs. So this was the 29th, let me find it here. So we did this, fell, entry was 282.80, share 1700, risk 28.90, exit 281.48, profit 22.44. Again, you can take half this risk. You can split it up and divide it by four. People always say, well, what? how much risk do you take? It depends on the size of your account. It depends on your size of your account. You should be taking a small risk if you're new, if you're starting out, if you're a beginner. This was a nice quick uh, move here we got on this particular day because then we kind of reversed. So this was again the 29th. We shorted it, got in, got the drop, got out, boom. We were in and out of this trade in the first 20 minutes of the day, it was less than that. And again, summer trading, don't want to sit around all day. I never trade six and a half hours anyways. If you want to hold something, I think it's much, much, much easier and better to take an option straight. Of course, in an option, you've got to get the timing right, but you don't have to worry so much about the wiggles and jiggles of the market. And then you don't have to worry so much about like the FOMC minutes that are coming out this afternoon or economic data that comes out sometimes later in the day or news things. But if you stay in something and you really want to hold it, and particularly if you want to hold it overnight, I think options are a better way to do that. And then we did on Thursday, this was the last day of the week because I closed the room Friday, we did the market again. We did the market again. I mean, the, the moves were there in the market. This was a bigger move than on this day here. This is the 30th. Market closed here, gap down, fell. Again, this was Wednesday to Thursday. This is a daily chart. We entered it here at 280.55, 1,700 shares. Risk was 29.75 exited at 277.90, 45.05. That was a nice move. That was a fairly big move. Um, we had a good exit on that too, but again, was not a low of the day exit. But you never know when something's going to reverse. And when you're day trading, it's extremely important to make sure that you book the profits. You only have between 9.30 and 4 to get in and out to make money. Again, I call it chunking it out. With an option, you can, you can give it a little bit more time. But sometimes if you take an option, maybe you want to get out of half the trade if you get a move in the morning and something. Maybe take two contracts. You get out of one, you hold the other one, something like that. You know, it's good to book money. And I think that's another mistake that people make too. They want to hold everything, hold everything, hold everything, hold everything. You know, like I thought 275 this particular day. Again, we were out way before that. It did not get quite to 275. It tried. I think it was like 275.60 or 275.50. It didn't get to 275. So if you were trying to get it to 275, you would have given back all the profit. So that doesn't make any sense. Anyways, here was the gap. This closed here. Again, this was the 29th. Then last day of the month, gap down here fell. We shorted it, got the drop. And again, we were out before here. I, th I thought we had a good exit on that though. Any questions on that? 
So that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of last week. And then Friday, I closed the room for the holiday. I don't think it's good to trade around a holiday. And we were off. And then Monday, we were closed for the holiday too. So anyways, talking about the philosophy behind the system that I do, I'm looking for a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. In the case of the trades that we talked about, Nike is a good example. I'm looking for the move to continue all day or close to the close. Doesn't mean I'm playing it all day, but the idea of shorting is I want a big fat red bar. Just like the idea of going long is I want a big fat green bar, okay? We're trading momentum. I want a big move in the day and preferably an early confirmation of my bias in the move. And then again, I'm looking for very precise entries with follow through. That's the whole idea. Again, the follow through, follow through, follow through, which is very important. And again, you're seeing a lack of that right now in the market. You're seeing a lack of follow through in the market to the upside. Now, how do I pick which gap to trade? Well, I have a system that I use every day. It's a checklist, just like we talked about with the map earlier. And I said, you get up and you're going into the market every day not knowing what's going to happen. So I do all the work in the pre-market. In the morning, I get up early. I rate my gaps. I determine if I'm doing nothing or something or how many things I want to look at. I also look at the market. Now, we happened to do the market a lot last week because the market was gapping. And the market does have big moves, okay? The market's had a lot of big moves lately, at least this year, for the first six months of this year. But we do look at specific stops like we did the Nike. It's a checklist that I go through. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you decide you want to come and learn from me, this is what you'd learn. So I teach a two-day class, and it's once a month. You would learn the rating system, and I go through it. And I go through this process myself every single day. And again, you can use it for options or day trades. We're talking today about the fast trades, so we're specifically talking about the day trades. But it's the whole idea of being able to predict what is going to happen before it does. I'm not talking about three weeks from now. I'm not talking about where the market's going to be December 5th of 2022. I'm talking about between now and 10 a.m. I'm talking about between now and 4 o'clock. Or if I'm doing an option, I'm talking about between now and Friday or next Friday. Okay, so I'm doing the weekly options. Today's Thursday. I didn't do any options today, but if I did, I would be doing something that expired next Friday. Okay. So that's still, when you look at it and think about it, a short period of time to even do an option. The thing with options is you're paying out. The, the longer out you go, you pay out for so much. So I don't do leaps. Leaps are long-term options. You have to pay a lot extra for that time. We're not predicting what's going to happen six months from now, 12 months from now. The idea of being an active trader is to try to make money on a consistent basis, okay? So everything that I'm looking for, when I'm looking for the selling, because again, we're talking about shorting, shorting and selling. That's what we've been talking about today. I'm looking for institutional money. And part of the reason that the market has been selling off this year, and again, I've been talking about this on TV for the last six months, is that the institutional money isn't coming in to support the market. If it was, we'd be near the highs. We'd be back up over the highs. We will be anywhere near halfway through up to the highs institutional money is not coming in buying the market to support people's positions right now whether they're retirement positions or just regular stock positions that people own outright and if you're a swing trader i don't swing trade but if you are you understand that and you know that and you see that and you're seeing your positions fall off that is part of the problem with doing this idea of buying the dip all the time and then trying to predict exactly the low you can't predict the low and you can't predict the high and that shouldn't be your job anyways. Your job is to make money. You have one job every day when you get up to make money. And so I'm very strategic when I'm looking at it and I'm trying to pick what to do. So again, it's it's momentum. So here was a gap we did. I don't have this trade in here, but this is a good chart that was a recent chart we did back in the middle of June that shows you momentum. This is UAL. Everybody knows this stock. This gap down, this closed here gap down fell. So this is what I mean by number one, a gap. Also, it was a short. Okay, we did it as a day trade short, but also it shows momentum. It's a big fat red bar. Okay, so from the tippy top up here around 39 and change for this to be down all the way here at 36, that's a big bar for UAL. Okay, again, this is a daily, and then you see the volume. So, momentum is what you're looking for every single day. You're not getting much of that today. 
Okay, little tiny bar here in the market, little tiny bar in everything. Again, probably waiting for two o'clock to see what happens after that. But the whole idea of trading momentum is what allows you as an individual to make more money rather than making five cents, 10 cents, 20 cents, or basically scalping. So momentum traders take positions in stocks in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. Like UAL was an explosive move. Nike was an explosive move. We got that right. Even though we got stopped out of that first trade, that's, that was a short, okay? Again, that ended up coming all the way down to 103. This enormous move that you get in one direction, and again, we're focusing on shorts today, it happens fast, it happens quick, and again, we're looking for it to happen in the gap. So momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Why? Because you want it to come in pretty quick, pretty quick. And again, for me with the day trades, it's early in the morning. As far as options, I'm looking to get a move, like I said, within a week, within a week. And that's still fast to me, okay? Any questions here so far? So let's talk about summer trading. Someone was asking about options earlier. I think it was Anna. The idea of summer trading, you know, you can do swing trades if you want, but I think options trading protects you because you can only lose in an option what you have at risk. If you take one contract, that's all you can lose whatever you paid for it, or five or 10. Swing trading, people are getting beat up this year. I'm getting a lot of emails from people that are getting beat up this year because they're taking positions in stocks, they're holding them overnight, okay? They're on two to one margin or even cash, and then they get up in the morning and they're down, okay? When you take an option, you have a fixed risk, even though you have a set time that the position has to go in. And again, you could give yourself a cushion out. If you wanna do something out for two weeks, you can. I think one month is long. I'm doing the weeklies, but it's an easier way to, I think, have a big move overnight with a lot less risk by getting overnight moves in stocks and, and, and the overall market, which we've been getting, by taking an option straight. So we're just gonna go over, this was one that we did. This chart has been such a fabulous chart. We did target. I have to look at when target earnings are for this summer. Probably the end of August. These usually come out at the end. This is a retailer, again, that has been struggling, like many of them, overstock and inventory and everything else, and the earnings weren't so good the last time around for target. So we did a trade in this. So again, I have an options newsletter where the trade gets emailed to you. If you want to take it, you take it. This was sent Thursday, 6-9, 2.18 in the afternoon. It was the 155 puts that expired on the 17th. So let's go look at it, 6-9. There we go. And here's the move. Again, boom, this is what? Selling. So we did the 155 puts, it dropped through the strike, into it, past it, get the drop, okay? And actually, this is another one, if you held it to the very, 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 very last day, you could have made even more money. <clears throat> I didn't think it made sense to do that. The trade was up way before that and was up a lot, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but the reality was this came down and broke 140 on the 17th of the day of expiration. So this was one that cost, I thought it was pretty cheap, 260 for one contract. So 30 contracts, which is an advanced trader risk of 7,800, sold at 13. This is, this is way before the 17th. This is on the first drop that I just showed you. Profit 31,200, return on investment was 400%. I didn't look at what it was the last day. I know it was more than that because again, it was almost 20 points for the strike. But the idea of holding something the last day, I think you really take a chance in doing that. If you had a beginner risk of an average of $1,000, 1,044 contracts, your profit was 4,160. Again, how much you risk should depend on the size of your account. If you have $10,000 in an account, you could take a risk like this. If you had $2,000 in your account only to trade options, this would be too much. That would be half your account. Anyways, a really nice trade. Again, this is taking it and getting the first drop down. Same concept, trading the gap, shorting. A put is a short. And again, same philosophy, the momentum, okay? A lot of people struggle with options, and again, I'm not gonna talk too much about options here today. Let me just go back to this. <clears throat> the idea is to get the move pretty quickly, which we did here, in your direction, the direction you're taking the trade. Again, a put is a short, it calls a long. 
So I'm buying puts and selling puts. I'm buying calls and selling calls. I'm, it's directional trading. It's momentum trading. I'm not doing any fancy types of options. And again, this is something where you're not in and out of it for five, 10 minutes, okay? You're, you're taking it, although theoretically, you, this, this went the first day. You could have got out of this actually the first day, but it was a better move if you held it a little bit. And you had time, because I called it on the Thursday that expired the following Friday, okay? Anyways, everything I do is about high probability, high probability. So there's no 100% in the market. You have to accept the fact that some of your trades are going to lose. So that's why you can't risk your whole account or even half your account in a trade. You have to put the odds in your favor. You put the odds in your favor by saying, this looks good, this rate's high, therefore I'm gonna do it. And again, I'm trying to pinpoint and doing one thing a day, just like last week. And again, we did two trades in Nike, but it was the same ticker symbol, okay? So the whole idea is I'm reading the price of the gap and then I'm using technical analysis on an advanced level to pinpoint which stock to trade that day in what direction. But again, I prefer to short. I prefer to short. I've always preferred to short. So let's talk about another one we did. We've done a lot of trades in the SPY. This was a great call, though. Um, this was back at the beginning of June, June 9th. Actually, it was the same day we did the uh, we did the target. So I call this a little bit after the open. The four unknown SPYs that expired on the 17th. Cost was 575. I don't. I didn't think this was crazy. Although the put prices for the market has been has gone up this year. 15 contracts, risk was 86.25, sold at 36, profit was $45,375 with a return on investment of 526%. So let's look at the chart. Again, the ninth, the 409s was here. So again, came down in here, fell, dropped, boom, boom. And if you held this, if you held this the very last day, again, you had a better exit, I don't think it makes sense to do that, but ultimately, here's where this one went. Again, the 409s, this was the 17th, look. Came down in here to like 360. Look at that. I mean, that was insane. We, we captured it at the right time. We caught it at the right time. We got the direction at the right time. Again, the momentum was in our favor. This is the drop you want. That's the drop you want, okay? And and we got it. Now, if you had taken a smaller risk, if you did two contracts, eleven fifty sold at thirty six, profit six thousand fifty. Again, nice trade. You could have held it longer. Really nice trade. Again, that is a put, okay? That was an option. So a nice move for the market. Again, we'll see where the market goes by Friday. I'm going to be really watching it. But time is money. We've been talking about this all day today. I know I only have a few more minutes left. But the whole idea of trading is to put your money to work for you in the shortest amount of time possible. Otherwise, your money is tied up into a trade. Say, again, people are in swing trade positions right now that are down. They don't want to exit them with losses. They don't even want to exit them if they're up because they were up more at the highs. And their money is being utilized and used up. They can't use that money for anything else, okay? So it's one of these things where you have to choose what you're doing. Active trading is just this. You're in and out. But I think a lot of people do not have the proper education. They don't know how to train. Again, people are trading blind. They're taking ideas from other people and they don't know why they're doing them. They don't understand the strategic reason for why they're doing them. And a lot of people don't even know why they're trading at all. What are your financial goals? You really need to get clear with them. Why do you wanna trade? You wanna make extra money while you have a full-time job? Maybe you're retired and you wanna make extra money. You wanna quit your job and do this full-time by 2023. Write it down in a piece of paper. Think about it. There's so many people out there that want to trade and so many people that want your money. When you go into the market, you are not creating something. You're not knitting a sweater and selling it to somebody. You are in there, you yourself. This is an independent activity, okay? You come and learn from me, but you're the one taking the trains. You're pressing the button. You're risking your own money. You have to really decide this is something that you want to do. It is an investment, but it's well worth it if you're going to give it your all to do it. I think a lot of people, like I said, don't really ever give it their all. They do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and after a couple of years, they're down money. They paid for classes, they didn't really get into them or they didn't work, and they've lost money also trading. I threw myself into it, and that's how I was successful, but I do think it's important for you to invest in yourself as a trader. Part of that is a class, part of that is education, and part of that is really thinking about what you're doing when you're trading. And for me personally, again, the 
the um oh take all day oh thank you john <laughs> take all day i'm pretty tired i was up early this morning to be on tv i don't think i can talk all day today without caffeine anyways uh but but when i get up in the morning i'm looking for is there anything good to do like today we didn't do anything i didn't do anything today didn't do any day trades today didn't do new options today i said this is slop and chop we have to wait we have to wait till tomorrow we have to wait to see what we're gonna do Again, you've seen what's been going on in the, in the market all this year. Sometimes it's better off to just take a day off and take a step back. If nothing meets my criteria, then I don't do any trades, okay? And that's okay. So if you decide you want to come and take my class, it's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate each gap to trade each morning since there are so many stocks each day that gap. Using a system is significant to your success. My class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online, and I teach it once a month. So the next class is a couple of weeks from now, end of the month, July 23rd and 24th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Now, I am doing a July 4th special only till Friday. So today is Wednesday. If you decide you want to come and learn, the special is good till Friday. It's for the Golden Gap course and the Trends course. It's called the Golden Gap course combo. It's $74.99. You get two classes. And then you would get the trading room free for one year and the options newsletter free for one year. This helps you if you want to get the calls. If you're not sure if you want to do stocks or options, it gives you both. Again, the options newsletter is separate. Those are emailed to you. The room is a live room where you must attend live. If you would like a trial, you can email me for the next two days. We'll see what we get Thursday and Friday. Again, like I said, it will be a significant day for the market, um, but we'll know in a couple of days. Any last minute questions here by anyone? Listen, thanks for having me, anybody. There, oh, go ahead. <laughs> hey, Melissa, is there a link for them to go to to get that, or you just want them to email you? So just email me. Email me questions email if you want to trial email me okay. if you want to sign up and thanks so much for for having me sherry thank you for coming back again i'm i always love it when you do you do a great job and uh clearly people enjoy your presentation so we're looking forward to having you back again so thanks and thanks for being on time <laughs> <laughs> of course thanks sherry